Hey guys, welcome back to another video. It's your man Jay. So let's talk about something here. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. But before I do so, be sure to hit that join button down below. Hit the links in the description. Also, you can find some new t-shirts and everything and merchandise that I put up in the store. Uh, but if you're not a member, you are missing out. I'm getting ready to show some beautiful things. And I've already shown some things privately to those members on the channel. So hit that join button. Pick your level of boss status. And then you can see what's hiding in the background for you. Today... We're going to talk about the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. Now, I want to start off this video by saying this is solely my opinion. Uh, everything that I'm talking about can be taken way out of context or uh, context, or you can just view it as someone's opinion. Uh, and uh, I'm going to try to be as level and fair and honest as I always am when I'm doing these vlogs and talking about devices. But this phone right here um, is going to be... I guess if you if you consider the way the media treats the LG V60, this phone is going to get it even worse for some reason. I don't know why. And they're going to focus on the price. Now, right now, it's supposedly a uh, Sony has confirmed that the phone is going to be $1199. Uh, and that is uh, if you pre-order through B&H, you're going to get a free. It's I mean, really, I think the phone is supposed to be priced at $950 from what I was told originally. But now they're doing this $1199 price. And honestly, we really don't know if that's going to be the official price for just the phone because the Pro model was supposed to be $1300, $1299. And the model that's being sold now was originally $950. Um, I got some pretty good sources too. So with that being said, let's just call it at $1199 for the current model because that's what's being told to the world. Uh, and you're getting the Sony earbuds that I already own, which are just phenomenal. Uh, you're going to get those Sony earbuds too if you pre-order uh, before, but the phone is, I think it's not going to come to be in your hands until the end of July, July 24th. Pre-orders are between June 1st, I believe, and June 28th, but everything is subject to change. So the reason I said that this phone is going to get hit like the V60 uh, is because I don't think, you know, no shade to people, but I don't think people, some reviewers who do tech, are thinking about you the consumer now let's be clear here i have brought you to i've brought to this channel several phones that cost less than 400 dollars and they are phenomenal and you don't need to spend more than 200 dollars sometimes on a device but now i'm not talking to you i'm talking to the people out there that are in this level uh if you are interested in quote unquote flagships that actually hold the price uh that present themselves as an expensive device and they want you to pay that money for it. So I'm talking to those people. Uh, and I'm also talking to the people who always have an opinion about a brand or a price and you don't support that brand or you don't even like, you, you would never even spend that much money on a device. So here's some things to consider. I have all pretty much a number of the latest uh, flagships uh, and um, they cost more than the Sony. They cost more than the Sony or the same. So, and, you know, a lot of people in that price range, when you start to talk about flagships, they talk about specs. This is what they talk about. Um, and if we just lay out the specs on the ground, um, Sony wins right off the top. They win. They win that battle because they have something that none of the other OEMs have. A 4K display. So for those that are actually Sony fans, and I'm going to talk about updates too, because I know that's going to be a question that some of you guys, well, they're not, they're, they're, they're. we're going to tackle these things one by one. So this might be a lengthy video and it might not. Uh, but what I will tell you is if you just lay out the specs on the, on the table, Sony wins. Tell me how they don't win. No other phone. Ha and, and we're talking about, you, you're watching this video. If you're watching this video on 4K, salute. Because all of my videos now are 95% of my videos now Thanks to my my beautiful Sony A6100 with the Sigma 16 millimeter lens. Thanks to this, I now do pretty much all my videos, especially my vlogs, in 4K. So most people enjoy watching 4K content, especially if you're watching it on a real 4K TV, like the one sitting behind me. If you're watching it on a real 4K TV, you should be really impressed with this quality. So. A lot of people want to watch content on a 4K. They want to watch 4K content. 
but now we both know for YouTube it's probably a little too much. You don't need to watch in 4K because if you're watching this in 1080p, you're still getting some pretty good quality, right? Yeah, I know you're even 720, even 480p. This probably still looks great. Now, throw the specs on the table. Sony wins. They've got the latest processor inside, lots of RAM, lots of storage. The new aspect ratio for which I personally enjoy. And some of you guys say the industry will never do that. Let me tell you something. Years ago, I said this is the, the way the industry should go. Uh, and I think you really should adapt to that. A lot of you guys say, oh, it's hideous. But those same people, I was going to say hypocrites, but those same people are now using a 20 by 9 phone. And they're saying that it feels great. Now imagine when you get to 21 by 9, how good it's going to feel. So you put the specs on the ground, and I say personally, Sony wins. Just based on the display alone, and oh yes, I've matched up Samsung's displays against Sony display, their 4K display, uh, and it's better. The Sony display is better. It displays the quality better, and, but, and that's just how I feel. Sony fans, or just, you don't have to be a Sony fan, if you have seen the 4K displays on Sony devices and compared them next to Samsung phones, you know what it is. So just based on specs alone, that price point, and remember, we're going down the line here, the $1199 price point is going to get crapped all over by the media, people saying it's not worth it. The same people that talk about specs, they're going to say it's not worth it. Oh, it's not, it's this, this 21 by 9 is horrible. Meanwhile, they have a 20 by 9 phone right in their hand. So the price, it's not overpriced. When you look at by today's standards, it's not overpriced. Okay, and then if you just throw the specs out there, it beats up on the other phones. The only failure that I personally had with my Xperia 1 was the camera. And so those are the people going to say, oh, the Sony cameras are trash. Or some people might say, oh, Sony phones, uh, uh, you know, it's trash. The cameras are trash. They have the best mirrorless cameras, and but they can't even put good cameras on their phone. That was only the Xperia 1. I've had so many Sony phones the Xperia 1 um, is the only one that had a camera problem. Go check the channel. Their phones are their phone cameras are fantastic. So if in fact the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II has a better set of cameras than the Xperia 1, because that's what the competition is about for me with Sony, they're competing against themselves. If they fix that by switching to that Zeiss lens that they switch to, game over. Game over for all of the flagships that flagships that just came out, in my humble opinion. Remember what I said at the beginning of this video? Remember. So, if they fix that camera with the Zeiss lens, which I'm hearing through the grapevine, I'm hearing that they fixed it. You know what I mean? So, problem solved. Now, for those that want to talk about software, Sony software is ultimately stock Android. So, well, Jay, why are you saying it? They don't update their phones. Er, you don't know what you're talking about. Sony definitely updates their phones. They do it in a way that where you don't have to go in and check. It's going to automatically update, and I don't really like that. But um, it's kind of like Apple. You know, Apple will force you to do the update. Sony won't force you to do the update, but it'll already be there. So you might mess around and plug your phone in, and next, you, know, you reboot it, and you're on the next software. You're like, whoa, I didn't even know that. At least that's been my experience with Sony. I get an email, which is one thing I like about Sony software. And for those people that use Sony phones, you know what I'm talking about. For those that don't faithfully use Sony phones, you have no clue as to what I'm talking about. Sony sends you an email saying, hey, there's an update for your phone. You need to go update. And in my experience, um, with the times that I, I didn't update, eventually when I plugged in, it pulled the Apple on me and it updated. <sighs> So, software updates, okay, they update the phones. My oldest Sony phone right now upstairs is up, it's, it's on, it's not on the latest software update, but it's from like five years ago, I believe. It still got an update last year, I think, or this beginning of this year. They're trying, they're putting in work. So, software updates for this Sony Spirit 1 Mark II, I'm hopeful. And I have faith in Sony that they will, in fact, update the device. Now, um, a lot of you guys, or some of you guys, 
might still try to pick apart this phone and say, well, and, and this is something I just don't understand. If, if you're the consumer or even the techie, I don't understand why you're concerned about sales numbers. Why are you concerned about sales numbers? I've said this a billion times. Sales numbers don't mean that a phone is bad. Just like watching CNN or whoever you watch, they're going to put out what they want to put out. Fox, they put out all this stuff as hype. I don't even listen to that nonsense. They're putting out what they want to put out. So, and the same rules apply to the media. It's not a level playing field. They're putting out what they want to put out and, they want, they're, and they're leading you in your way of thinking. So, which leads to my next step of brand loyalty. I said it in my Telegram group and I'll say it here on video. Some people are so caught up in brand loyalty and hype marketing that they miss out on great devices. And that is true. Some of you guys aren't excited about a flagship or a phone or a tablet or whatever it is. You're excited behind the marketing that goes that goes along with that. And you believe the marketing. And if you say, no, no, I don't know. Uh, I just watch how you work. Sometimes less is more, which means just if you're in the tech space uh, and we're from from where I sit, I just sit quietly sometimes and read in the background. I, I don't say much on certain videos. I just watch. And I just go look at the history of the person. And, and when you lay it on the table, they're more excited about the hype behind the marketing and the brand. They don't even think about the device itself. This is a true fact or true statement with Motorola. They make fantastic products. Like, you remember when the first Moto Z came out? Everybody trashed that phone and said, ah. And I thought, wow, these people do not know how to review phones. They're trying to pick it up. You, you have to pick apart a phone, yes. But if you're not being fair across the board because you quote unquote only like a certain brand, how are you reviewing the device then? That's what I say. So there's no way that Sony, the company Sony, is bringing out trash phones or, or, or bringing out just their, their support and their marketing is all bad. Why in the world do you focus on that? It's not your concern. If you like a product, and I've learned that a lot of people, they haven't used a Sony device in like seven years. Oh, the last one I had, man, it was so bad. I had so much bad support from them. What kind of support are you talking about? You drop the phone and they don't want to fix your screen or, because I've seen a lot of that going on. You hacked the phone in some kind of way, you rooted it, messed it up. I've actually seen people break their own phones and then blame it on the OEMs for not supporting it and not um, uh, giving you a replacement or something like that. And somebody watching this video, you done that. You broke your phone. You did something to yourself. You didn't like how slippery it was. You didn't put it in a case. Something happened to where you were actually the person who initiated the phone going in a different direction. And then you lean to the OEM. Be honest with yourself. Just saying. But I'm not saying that Sony is the ultimate supporter of their devices and uh, that probably would lean more towards Apple and Google and possibly now Samsung. They're updating their phones a little bit faster than normal uh, than they normally were in the past. So let's just give credit where credit is due. Apple and when BlackBerry was on the playing field, they definitely updated their devices across the board. They shot those updates out like crazy. So when it comes to consistency with updates, let's just go ahead and say Apple does a really good job of that, Google does a good job with it, and Samsung does a good job with it. But that's not to say that LG and Motorola, all these other companies don't. It's just that I think those three companies might get the up, and I'm just not putting Samsung in the bucket because they just started. Because we all know Samsung was actually horrible with updating their devices. And I'm talking to the people that are intrigued by updates. You know me personally, I don't have to have an update on a device for it to, as long as it keeps working, I'm fine with it. So when it comes to Sony, some people say, you know, well, actually a, a statement that was made in my Telegram group, shout out to those people in the Telegram group. They say, you know, with well, Sony, you know, uh, what, what did they say? He said uh, something along the lines of um, Sony's marketing or something like that. I forgot what it was, but I just re replied to that is that, you know, you, you're only, you probably are only excited by what you read and hear, you don't really know the brand or something like that. Something, something along those lines to where the, the person was talking about. It's, the person wasn't wrong. Uh, we're just having a, a conversation, a smartphone conversation. Just a plug. Here's the link in the description. Remember that. So, I think Sony, unfortunately, will probably get tossed under the bus just because of the price alone, and that's sad. 
because that phone actually because what the techies will do, they'll put it up against something and say, oh, the benchmarks were higher. Uh, it, it didn't perform as well for having Snapdragon and blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, it needs more RAM for that price. I want it to be flawless. Listen, you guys have unrealistic expectations. You guys want to spend $4.99 and then get a phone with everything in it and you want it to work for the lifetime. And you, Those are personal fantasy phones. You're never going to get, there's not going to be one phone that's going to be flawless across the board. Not even the oh so great Poco phone. It's not. It can't be flawless across the board. I'm gonna show you what I do, do with that phone. So it's not flawless. You know, it, just because it has the specs, that doesn't mean it's flawless. You know, it's not like that it, because no, it's not a one size fits all when it comes to the smartphone game. Definitely not. Sony, and I'm not pro Sony. Don't get me wrong. I'm pro BlackBerry, but I love Sony. But I think Sony is going to get done just like every other OEM that's not Samsung and Apple. And that's just what it is, man. That's what it is. The media speaks how, how great Sony and Apple is. They even step all over Google, man. And it's only because of the pricing. Even the Google Pixel 4 XL is said to be overpriced. And I, I guess I can't go so far as to say it's overpriced. But it just didn't have some things that I wanted. Like it just needed to bump those specs up a little bit more. Just memory. If the Pixel 4 XL, that one is a thousand bucks, would have had 512 gigs of storage, no one probably would have said a thing. It, 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 people would have said things, but it would have been a different conversation. You see what I'm saying? Smartphone conversations. You feel me? So, Sony, in turn, probably will get picked apart. Just people will forget all about how good this phone possibly is or great it is. And how it stacks up against the competition just because of the price which i think is totally bogus and this is how the tech community operates you know why proven fact the tech community won't praise lg for the v60 and now that phone is going down and it only dropped 100 bucks but that doesn't mean it's not selling well that's just a promotion that somebody wants to the company timo wants to do i guess or change the price just to get more sales maybe it's doing really well because when I went to the store, that phone was, they were selling, I, they, they barely, I only had one store, they had the white one, I believe, I think it was just one store. And then the, the folding one, they were selling, because they had a BOGO going on. Even if they didn't have the BOGO, I think they probably would have sold that phone. Because I think the, the, the LG V60 is a phone, if you don't want to spend money on the, the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, because you know, you can't get that on a carrier. That's the conversation we had about it being on a carrier. Sony, side sidestep real quick. Sony devices are not on carriers anymore, pretty much. And the person tried to pretty much use that as a balance beam to say that's why the company's trash. But that's not correct. And I, my response was, what if Sony left the, the carriers alone because they were trying to screw them? Carriers like to put a whole bunch of junk on your phones. It slows down the software updates, if that means something to you. Carriers stop a whole bunch of things that goes on with phones. So maybe Sony decided, you know what, we're pulling out. We'll, if we don't sell a lot, so what? We got our camera line. We got our TV line. We got our laptop line. <laughs> There's so many other parts to Sony that are good. You got their memory options, like their memory, like storage. Oh, Sony's doing good in that. For those that know, they sell batteries. They do a whole bunch. So, you know, maybe Sony decided, you know what, we're pulling out. You guys aren't worth the hassle. You're trying to squeeze us for too much money. Who knows? Now, the V60, the V60 is a phone. That I think if, 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 if the tech space or the tech world isn't recommending that phone to consumers, you don't, you don't know anything about phones, man. You don't know how to review phones. There's absolutely no reason why people should re be recommending. And no diss, no shade, but there's no reason why people should be recommending phones like the iPhone SE, just praising it so much and not recommending the V60. And the reason I'm using the V60 is because it's, it, it's in the same playing field as a purchase can pay for it a, per a person can buy it meaning you can go on carriers or you can just buy it and walk and get it online if you need to like unlocked on ebay or whatever it's a it's in a space where you can find it out there the official unlocked version of the v60 isn't out yet and you believe so many people have requested to get that phone unlocked that just goes to show how much that phone is, is really liked but even if right now you can't get it officially unlocked you can buy a third party however the V60 should be getting recommended way more than the iPhone SE. I find that totally strange. And it, to me, it goes back to that media hype and branding. 
you don't really know what you're doing if you're recommending phones like that over the V60. That's just my personal opinion. I'm not saying those people are wrong, quote unquote. That's that techie fight. You know what I mean? Like, why in the world would you tell a person to get an iPhone SE second generation over the V60? I don't get it. Anyway, I'm going to slide out this conversation. Smartphoneconversations.com, by the way. So I appreciate you guys joining in. I would love to hear your thoughts on this one. This is going to be interesting because a ton of people are already saying that the phone isn't worth $1,199. Wait for it to go down. But what if, what if that's just with the headphones? Phone only, I was told it was going to be $949, which to me, it, it smashes the competition already if you're just looking at specs. Because remember, these these uh, pro members and these spec heads, techies, the high level, I only review high-end phones, that's all they care about is specs. You know what I mean? So even at $1,199, the Sony Spirit 1 Mark II beats up on the other competition, man. It does. So what if it comes out at 950 when it officially launched like it did last time? Even if it doesn't, I got to hear your thoughts on this. It's your man Jay. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's get out of here.